Hey, what's up? My name is John Fish, and I've been writing code since I was 10 years old. I worked at Shopify as a software developer intern when I was in high school. I went to Harvard for computer science, and now I'm a venture-backed founder. I'm working on a company called Bookshelved. It's social reading reimagined. If you're a reader, please sign up. So I learned to code, obviously, a very long time ago in a very different environment. And I think that there's no better time to learn to code than today. When I look at the resources and the tools that are available to people learning today, I think it's awesome. But I also think there's a lot of ways to be misguided right now, especially with AI tools. So in this video, I want to share with you how I would learn how to code if I were to start again from scratch. I'm going to use AI tools, but I'm going to use them in a particular way because honestly, I think there's a way that you could completely derail your learning experience. And I want to make sure that you don't do that. So pretty much every great developer that I know learned how how to code in the same way. And it's called project-oriented learning. Rather than learning from like a textbook or from a course, project-oriented learning is basically saying, hey, I wanna build something and here's what I know so far. So I'm gonna now learn what I don't know with the goal of building this thing. The reason that I think this works so well is that learning to code can be very frustrating. There's a lot that can be really annoying. And if you don't care about the outcome, if it's not satisfying to you, it's pretty easy to walk away from. So I'll share with you what I did, by the way. And what's fun is the code is still available on my GitHub. So I was kind of like a nerdy kid, right? And the project that I wanted to work on with my best friend at the time was about flipping coins. We were basically really curious about this question of how many times would you have to flip a coin in order to see 10 heads in a row? Because we were kind of understanding probability. We were 12 years old at the time, but not in a super meaningful way. And so this is a cool way for us to explore that. It was like, oh, could we flip millions of coins and see how many heads in a row we get? Like, what are the sequences? So that was the idea. We were like, hey, we want to flip a bunch of coins, but we have no idea how to get there. But hey, we have a project in mind. So now it's taking steps to break down that project. So what's the very first step to breaking down any project? So the very first step is actually just kind of understanding what tools you're going to use. And to do this, we kind of need to understand how programs work. Now, you might be familiar with this. You also might not be. So let me just give a very brief explanation. A program is a series of instructions that you write in a special language that the computer can understand. The computer will read those instructions and then execute them. So there are kind of three components here. There's the language. You need to decide on what language you're going to use. So this is going to be on a per project basis. In general, right, I would push beginners to Python or to JavaScript. JavaScript is going to be good if you're trying to build a website, a web project. Python is going to be good if you're trying to build a script, kind of like the one that I'm talking about here. These languages are just the most used languages. And so they're generally the ones with the most resources around them. And it's going to be the easiest to learn them. But you also might have a project that's very specific. So you might be really interested in like making a mobile app for Android or something like that. Pick a language that makes sense for your project. And you can find that just by Googling. Once you have a language, you need something to write that language in. This is going to be a text editor, kind of like Microsoft Word. The one that most people use these days is called VS Code, but there's a million alternatives. VS Code is really simple, intuitive. Most people I know use it. I use it all the time. And then finally, depending on the language, you might or might not need to install something so that your computer can read it and execute the program. So for example, for Python, you might need to download and install the latest version. If you're using JavaScript, you will need a web browser. You probably already have one. You're watching a video. But if you're using another language like Java or like Rust, there might be dependencies. Basically for this, you're going to want to Google install language name. You'll figure it out. Okay, cool. So at this point, we have our project in mind. We have the language picked out for it. We think we have our tools installed. We just have to make sure that they're working properly. So this is kind of like the tutorial level of any programming. It's called Hello World. So the very first program that you run, essentially just being like, hey, Am I writing these instructions properly? And is the computer reading and executing them properly? The goal with a Hello World program is literally just to print out Hello World on the screen. It's usually like one line. This is what it looks like in Python. This is what it looks like in JavaScript. So your goal is to write this program, get it to execute, and then you know, hey, my tools are working. And it's time to get started on the actual project. Cool. So now this is about learning a way of thinking. Programming at its core is a way of thinking. You have a problem and you want to break it down into a bunch of little sub problems until each of those sub problems maps onto something that you can execute on with the programming language. What do I mean by that? Well, let's break down the example of flipping a bunch of coins. First, we want to be able to flip one coin. So how do we simulate flipping a coin in Python? It's an interesting question, right? You can think about it for a second. You're like, how would a computer simulate flipping a coin? Now, based on your background knowledge, you might have some answer to this, and it might be very obvious to you, or you might not. And I'm more interested in the case where you don't, because I think this is where you learn how to program. So much about becoming a better coder is just learning about how to ask questions and how to answer those questions using digital resources. And this is where I think things have changed in the past few months and where it gets really exciting for learning code. So for me, right, when I was asking questions, I would Google things. I would be like, how do you flip a coin in Python? In general, you're going to find some great results. Stack Overflow is a famous site that has a bunch of question and answers for programming. You're going to learn a ton from it. There might also be blog posts, things like that, especially for beginner projects 
projects like this, someone else has probably done this before and you can learn from that. But my belief is that AI tools are actually just really phenomenally good at this step. So you might be familiar with tools like ChatGPT, where ChatGPT is an AI agent that you can talk to. It's like a dialogue agent. You say something, it says something. So if you ask a question, it might try and answer that question. And this has been really powerful in coding because of tools like GitHub Copilot that literally write code for you. But this is dangerous when you're learning how to write code. Because if you don't understand what the code is being written and you're just kind of copy pasting it and just like hoping that it works, it's hard to put yourself onto a skill curve where you're actually improving. But these tools can be used as kind of like a super powered Google. I think it makes a ton of sense to go into ChatGPT and be like, hey, how would I flip a coin in Python? Rather than being like, hey, write me a program that flips a million coins and prints out the longest sequence, breaking it down into simple questions, being like, hey, how do I print something in Python? How do I generate a random number in Python? What is an if statement in Python? I think it's really powerful. So your goal shouldn't actually just be get the project done as quickly as possible. Your goal should be get the project done, understand it, and then build on it. So understanding everything that you're doing as you get through this process where you don't have a line of code in your program that you don't understand. So this is the type of framework that really effective coders get themselves in. You have this big project in mind, this big goal in mind. You break it down into smaller projects, smaller goals, until eventually you have these things that feel manageable and you're able to attack them one by one. So if you know how to do this already, great. Execute the step, move on to the next one. If you don't, go to a resource like Google, Stack Overflow, ChatGPT, and query, ask questions until you can figure it out. Learning how to think like this and learning how to research like this will pay dividends in the future. Because then when you're done your first project, you can pick bigger and more ambitious projects until eventually you're working on really big projects. And that's cool. Now you might have a bunch of questions with this, right? It's like, what about theory? What about learning from textbooks and things like that? And look, I mean, I studied computer science, right? I get it. I think these things are valuable, but I think the most valuable thing is to learn how to think and to orient yourself around projects because this is what keeps momentum flowing. With a skill like coding, you learn so much more by doing than by talking about doing. And the best entrepreneurs and engineers that I know are just insanely action oriented. They have an idea for a project and they just go build. A lot of it is just like, okay, let's get up and let's build this thing and let's learn the theory that we need to learn in order to make this thing happen. And I think one of the really cool things about coding is that there's just always something to learn, right? And so as long as you're engaged in this process of you know, consistently improving, consistently working and learning, then yeah, you're never gonna run out of something. You're never gonna know everything there is to know because the library of knowledge is expanding faster than you can consume it. And I think that's really cool because if it's an enjoyable process for you, it's like, hey, you can do this forever. The reason that I love programming so much is that I get to take something that hasn't existed and I get to just bring it into the world. It's like this never existed before, now it does. And being able to express myself in that way, being able to bring something into the world like that, I just think is so beautiful and I love it so much. So to summarize, pick a project, pick a language, set up your tools, make sure the tools are working, and then get into this process of iterative refinement. And hopefully you fall in love. Thanks so much for watching. If you got value out of this, please subscribe. My name is John Fish. I'll see you again soon.